You're now tuned in to RadioGR.co.za. It's about that time. It's party time from the Couch of Swine on Radio DR.co.za. Hi. 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 It's party time from the Couch of Swine, and I'm here with the dragon. The dragon. The captain. <laughs> And today's topic is hashtags won't save South Africa. How do you feel about that, guys? Yo, man, um, we're here talking about it. We're not doing much, but we're talking about it. Yeah, I also feel like talking about it, is, it it's a start, you know. Yeah. So besides other things, let's just get into it once. Yeah. And we're sitting with our guest, CK, who's also known as Co-CK, Emma Iwoha. How's it, buddy? What's good, ladies and gentlemen? Hey. Oh, hey. And hey. Dumi Zamini. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> what's up, what's up, what's up? Oh, hey. So before we get into the topic, I just want to say that like, to my audience, um, this is a disclaimer. Basically, what will be discussed today is not intended to like victimize anyone. We're just having a group discussion and attempts to finding a solution um, towards gender-based violence and xenophobic attack crimes that are currently happening in our country. Um, yeah, so the dragon and the captain, please introduce the drink of the day. Uh, drink of the day is some kota kota. <laughs> Gordon's. <laughs> The O triple O G triple O G you know nigga, of the day one. Yeah, the the one and only, the one that's shot up to 160 bucks, nigga. First of all, Gordon's, I don't appreciate how you've done this to us. <laughs> we 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 trusted you, We've and this is what you. you yeah, this is what they've done thin. to us, dude. How? Gordon's did not have a recession, N- nigga. We held Gordon's up <laughs> while we were down. We broke yeah, them up. People looked from down the upon up. Gordon's in the beginning. Now, see, I tell you, like you see, time <laughs> We never got reparations for apartheid, Gordon's. <laughs> this is the time. This is the time, Gordon's. I want to see Gordon's take a stand. <laughs> like this is a pertinent issue. Wow, in guys. The time. I didn't know people love Gordon's as much. <laughs> but hey, shout out to Gordon's. Drink of the day. So for those of you who don't know about uh, CK or Dumi, can you guys please give us a little backstory? Where are you from? Um, what do you do? You know, something, Jay. Spice it up, guys. <laughs> you want to start? No, I think ladies first. Ladies first. Know. I mean, just, just before, but it's fine. Yo, what's up? I'm Dumi Lamini. Um, I'm from Mslanga. I'm Tlanga La Lucia. I have a huge ass family. <laughs> you know. What, like do you mean? what do you mean by that? That is by far the <laughs> understatement of the year. She has a brother called Lamini Lamini. Lamini Lamini. Wow. Lamini two yeah. times. When they, got, when they got tired of naming kids. <laughs> yeah. But no, guys, my family's big. I got like 25 siblings. Yes, five yes, siblings. yes. yes. <laughs> Five mothers left. I live with two of them. I have a daughter, beautiful little girl, Smartly. Shout out to you, my baby. And oh. yeah, that's that's me. I, I'm in advertising and marketing at Tech Rush. I do the admin there, and I'm a receptionist. So yeah, Haslisha. Mm, yes, mm, you know mm. you got stuff. <laughs> <Hey. laughs> away, away. <laughs> thanks. And then Kosike. Uh, yeah, guys and gals, uh, my name's Kosike. I'm originally from Nigeria. Lived in a few different places, but uh, family's based in Cape Town. I'm out here in Durban doing my thing, and my thing is civil engineering, project management, that type of hustle. And yeah, I'm just out here. My guy. Getting it, <laughs> <laughs> uh, getting it good. <laughs> um, so, Dumi, I know you have a bit of a backstory with regards to gender-based violence. And before we go deep into it, I'd just like you to just tell us about your story. And then from there, we can sort of um, peel That's off and, yeah, and dissect and talk about the situation happening in South Africa. Okay, so as some people know, I've been raped twice and my sister was kidnapped in the same year. So my first rape was, it wasn't really like something that hurt 
not that it hurt me as much, but it was hard. But my second one hurt me the most because it was someone I considered a friend and we had been friends for a very long time. And I don't know what else would have happened if my sister wasn't there with me. So what happened was we went, um, we went out and then we were like, okay, I wasn't really drinking. I had probably like one drink. And then he was like, okay, I'll Uber you guys to my place. So he Ubered us to his place. And then we got to his place because we had to leave for my boyfriend's birthday. And my sister was like, to me, I'm, I'm not sure about this place anyways, because she had been kidnapped before my rape. Mm. So she was like, okay, sh I'm just gonna send mom a live location. And she set up the live location, and thank God she did that. We were sitting upstairs, then I was mixing my drinks. So I always mix my own drinks, and then I gave that one to my sister because he was like to me, no, do me, I got you a drink. Here's your drink. And I was like, okay, you never offer me a drink. But anyways, so I had the drink. Then I was like, okay, I need to go to the bathroom. I went to the bathroom. Then the last thing I remember is him coming to the bathroom. And I was like, why are you here? And then I don't really remember what happened. And then the next thing my sister said, she heard me screaming. She came banging on the door trying to get to me and he had two other friends there that were with my sister and my mom suddenly realized like something's going on we've been at this place for too long and then the cops came to the scene um, my family came to the scene my boyfriend came to the scene and after that I don't know whether we went to the police station or the hospital first we went there and then they took, so they do a swab test and everything. They found his DNA in me. And before we left, I was so broken and I was like to him, like, how could you do this to me? Like, started swearing at him. And I was like, I just felt I was in so much pain. And then uh, we went to the police station and then the cops were telling me, no, there's not enough evidence to to do anything and that's something they do a lot and after that and the last thing he said he was like to the cops and he's like yeah i fucked her and then that that's probably what touched me the most because i was like you know we've been friends for so long like how could you do something to me like this how could you drag me how could you take advantage of me? How could, how could you just think that it's right to do that to someone? I don't care whether you, I'm your friend, whether, like, don't you have sisters? You came from a woman. You, why do you do this? And then for the cops to tell me that there's not enough evidence. And I'm just like, you've taken all the evidence that you need. And then you still gonna be out here and tell me there's no not enough evidence. So my family was very mad about it. They wanted to do things, but then there's not really much you could do. And then after that, he came back and then I blocked him off like WhatsApp and stuff. He went on my social media and he tried sending me a message and he was just like, "Hey, do me," and I'm like, "What the actual fuck?" So yeah, that's that's my story. <laughs> wow. Je Good lord. <laughs> Jeepers. And no, as she before you go on um dragon, as she's saying this, uh, so I did some research and it says here it is estimated that over forty percent of South African women will be raped in their lifetime and that only one in four rapes are reported and also estimated that only 14% of these perpetrators of rape are convicted in South Africa. And, like, listening to that, I mean, all the evidence was basically right there. there. Bro, there's, the like, right there's right there. like five guys in the room. That means, like, four out of the five. <coughs> yeah, just, um, Jesus, that's, that's, a fuck, that's a fucked up thing. Yeah, that we have to deal with on a daily basis. Mm. And, you know, there, there's not much that guys can do in a circle like this. You know what I mean? 
because the assholes probably won't listen to this shit anyway. That's what I always say, like hashtags and stuff. It becomes tricky. It, is it, it, it is it tricky? Is it the effective medium for reaching the people who need to hear this? Because we as people who understand uh, in inverted commas, uh, because do we really at the same time, but we'll get to that. People who understand, we can sit here and talk about it and all agree with each other about what makes sense, but uh, the people yeah. who don't understand, the hereditary mm, where are they? Stuff. The hereditary They're stuff. Not part you of know, this like the guy whose dad whipped his mom's ass like for his whole childhood. He knows that a woman is someone to be beat. You know what I mean? To to make your point um, present, to make your point is to beat a woman. That's all he's known. And then you cut to a guy who knows that everyone's opinion is valid and votes and, 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 and. A democratic dictatorship versus a democratic... Um, you know, yeah, household. Yeah. <clears throat> so how do you how do you dive into a situation that you have never been into as a guy? You know, like that's the question that I've been posing to women is that tell us how you you want us to deal with it because I've been in situations where I've asked women, I've asked girls that I go out with and stuff. Like, dude, are you okay? Like, are you okay to go home? Like, I feel like that's mandatory, though. You know? Honestly, to like, ask you, we, your friends or the girls, like, and, are you and okay? And you ask them, like, and then you need and then, to know. But this is my point: is that sometimes you're met with aggression. It's like, dude, mind your business, you know? Yeah. Like, I'm doing this. You know what I mean? Well, that's when you. And step that's back, not. Though. That's not. The, that's not the. That's not the rule. Yeah. That's. What was it? Uh, you're the exception, not the rule. Mm. Yeah. Those are the exceptions, ne? Mm. And it's not for me to m now make that the rule. But I'm saying, like, at least give us a guideline of how is it that we go about helping or aiding the situation. Do you know what I'm saying? That's, that's a good point because also a lot of people will not have even had that conversation ever in their life, so how would they know? As men, we mm. actually are the worst type of fools because we really don't know what we don't know. Yeah. And we will assume, and we will be wrong yeah. because, you know, we don't know. So we really do need that, that guidance in terms of being an ally in those type of situations. Wait, yeah. uh, party time, what do you think guys should, like, actually do in a situation like this? And Good you can question. chime in too, to me. Yeah. Like, what do you need from us as guys in this situation? I think just... Just act like how females act, you know. Okay, not specifically, but <laughs> I'm just saying, like, <laughs> just just giving that side eye. <laughs> <laughs> giving okay. that side eye. Okay, no, it came out wrong, but like, <laughs> you're not put into this world like to rape someone. You know what I mean? You're yeah. not. You do what you're meant to be doing. Mm. In the morning, you're meant to wake up. If you're going to work, go to work. If you're meant to clean the house, clean the house. Go on about your life and stop like trying to rape or touch someone inappropriately or all that stuff. And not just to men, to everyone out there. Yeah. Don't be out here doing those extra things that make someone else uncomfortable. Don't take it out of your way to make someone else feel like shit and like ruining their they self and, you know, just... Just do what you're meant to do. Wake up and do what you're meant to do, which is not go out and rape or kill or, yeah. you know. I just feel like it's, it, it, it's guy culture, though, because you get, like, this thing where, like, you'll have a girl sleep in your bed, fine, sharp, she's maybe a little bit over too drunk, but she's sleeping in your bed. Now you're going to go to your friends, the people that you're with every day, and they start calling you gay and stuff like that for not sleeping with her. But they don't really understand. They're like, yo, this person was drunk. I couldn't really do anything like that. But other people take advantage, which is what, I don't know how you, how you stop that. I don't know if people need to be taught that. But for me, it's just general knowledge. If a girl says no, she says no. But I don't know how, if I can understand the concept, why can't you? Yo, you yeah. see, that's where the problem is, is that everyone is pulled so much into peer pressure and how you must act 
to, I don't know, to feel good around your friends, to be a man because your friends are like, no, dude, why aren't you sleeping with this girl? You can't get this girl. You can't do this. How about you focus on you? You focus on your morals about how you want to go in your life. Your mom didn't raise you to be some kind of rapist or pedophile or whatever. You, f you need to focus on you and don't care about what other people think. Mm. If you see a girl and you like, you know, she's intoxicated, let me try to help her. Let me, let's see what we can do. This goes for everyone. If I see someone and I'm like, okay, are you okay? Do you need help? Can I get you home? Like, that's what we need to do as South Africans, as mm. a human. We need to support each other. Don't don't find a way to be like, oh shit, she's she's drunk or he's drunk. Let's you know, let me take advantage. We need to, as humans, be human and actually learn to help people and true. not care what everyone says. So yeah, that's yeah. how I feel. You see, Kate, do you wanna add something? You look like you're deep in, <laughs> in I'm really, thought. I'm yeah. very deep in thought because uh, you know what? The thing is, the thing is, when we talk about these things, these things like rape, it's become so normalized that we talk about it like it's, it's a semi okay thing, but it's really not. It's really not. Yeah, yeah it's a sad story. It's, it's just like what you're saying. You're actually doing something that's inhumane, and you're actually treating someone as if they're not a human, mm. which is the which is the thing. Mm. So to me, this is on par with racism. It's on par with 100%, every, kind 100%. Of, every kind of evil that's perpetrated in the world, you know? So when people, when people normalize it and act like taking advantage of a woman should be the norm, yeah. that's something to me which just says, okay, size, you really need to take a step back. Disturbing. And I feel as, as men, we need to like stop that cycle of the younger generation coming up with those same type of ideas because it's a different world but i'm not saying it's a different world as in it was okay before but obviously people didn't really look down on men or husbands hitting their woman back in the day you, you get what i'm saying it was like an okay thing that's if she's out of line you hit her it shouldn't have been but it was but then nowadays like people have become accustomed like people we're all equal women have their rights and everything you know but it just to me the thing that hit me is like it's been a norm for so long, but it took just only a popular girl getting raped and murdered for people to have like this huge outbreak. But it, but again, Mike, that's not. It just it didn't take just this girl. Mm. The first, you know, this has been a thing for a while, you know, and like people, years. yeah, years now, ne? and it, it it's finicky because. There are pockets of it being a thing, like like uh, 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 when I say a thing, I'm saying like the the amount of attention that it mm. gets. Ne? There are pockets of it. If you look in history of South Africa, there's been pockets of this thing, and there's been specific women that have popped up to start the uprising. Ne? right? And there there are women. That are that that have been um, the the face of the movement years on end, yeah. and then the 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 the, po the problem is, and there's I don't want to say it's a problem, but the issue with SA is that is that it's always a, a pretty girl, a very popular pretty girl. That has to make that, you know, that jump into the limelight, and then, and then the whole country goes crazy. But like, this thing has been happening for years on end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Everywhere. And men and women have equally been hush hush about it. Mm. You know, yeah. and I, I, I'm not I'm not giving slide to any movement. I'm not giving slide to any uh, organization that's been prominent in the strife for um, the 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 uh, stopping of you know gender based violence i'm not i'm not slighting that but i'm saying 
every year we have every two years we have like one person that will st- strike an uprising and uh, and that poses the question is it uh, are we are we really wanting to stop gender based violence or are we just wanting to stop pretty like pretty people from being raped and, Which and actually just, brings, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, because there's actually a post that I screenshot saying, um, I'm worried about the missing girls who are not pretty nor have famous friends. Look at how fast Ukarabo and Uinene suspects were caught. And if we, I don't think, yeah. okay, I understand it, it. There is a trend of that. It's usually the pretty girls that end there's up being. There's a meme that came out for it and it was like, if I'm not pretty, doesn't mean that no one's going to be posting my pictures or anything. That's, yeah, you see, that's the thing. It's That's crazy. Know. That's crazy. But, like, if you look at it, guys, it is a trend. Mm. It is a trend that's happening, and we need to also, like, discuss that. Even U, even U, Peggy Kale, Namtlanja, at Uinenel's funeral, yeah. just said something like that, that don't make it just one pretty girl who ends up um, being the... Like, like yeah, yeah, because there's more than just her. There's thousands mm. of girls probably getting kidnapped and raped and killed and this and that right now. But where are they faces? Why are they not on on social media yeah. trending and stuff like that? So we got a question. Oh, what is this a question? Yeah, we got a question. Oh, okay, it says, um, "I hope you're well." Just wanted to ask, do you think Uinene death less was a lesson? for females to choose their friends wisely, knowing that they were willing to sacrifice their soul for you. Mm-hmm. As we saw, her mate didn't give up on her since day one until today. Was it a sign for a woman to be real to themselves, asking themselves, would my friends do this for me? This uh, is not about So, So, can you read that person's name? Um, it's Apelele Gumet. Apelele, you're a fucking asshole, and no one likes you. Wow. Okay? You're <laughs> okay, a fucking dick. <laughs> And you, dude, first of all, how the fuck are you bringing her friends into this? She's dead. What do her friends no, dude, have to do the with yeah. what friends, was done her to friends her? Are not the have prob- nothing her to friends do with the have fucking post office. I think it's because, okay, there was a story that said, well, it doesn't matter, but um, she was with a friend during that day, mm. ne? and the, they were like grocery shopping and just doing some, some errands, yeah. running some errands. And then the Good friend Lord. was like, okay, I have to go back. I think she had to cl- she had to go back to class quickly or something. So, I mean, a post office, she's thinking post office is right here, like, go yeah. and we'll meet back again yeah. on campus. Not knowing, obviously, that there's some fucking sick predator waiting Who's, to, like, do the know. shit to her. And you can't blame, yeah, and you can't blame the friend because... What does the friend know the about? Friend didn't know. The yeah. friend doesn't yeah. have any influence over yeah. what that guy is trying to do. Exactly. The, so, f- the friends know. have nothing to do with this. They, like, if that girl is out there blaming herself, she must not because she was there. She must just be happy that, like, uh, she was there in her last moments, but it sucks, you know? Yeah, it really does. It's, it's horrible. Yeah. But uh, I don't know. People just. <laughs> camera. <laughs> Hey, Apelele, cheese. Damn it. Is this, is this, I'll okay. It Apelele, I don't like you. The dragon. So, getting back to the topic. Um, xenophobic attacks, guys, is also another thing that's been going on in South Africa. Particularly, where's the Joburg? Joburg, Pretoria. Yeah. Pretoria. Cape Town. No, it, was a, it, it was a it was a it was a Durban it was a Durban a thing for yeah, a long time. It was a time. bit of Durban it as was well. A, yeah. It was been a Durban thing for a long time, and the problem is, ne, in, in case it in, we're we're rough people. <laughs> we're rough people. We are. It's not it's not something to be proud. It's something to be proud of. No, it isn't. Yeah, oh. Listen, listen. For every for every good quality, there's a negative in that quality as well. Like for, like what I was saying earlier, men should shut the fuck up, but men should pro- protect us, but men can't rule us. 
Do you get what I'm saying? There's an ambigu- ambiguity in that. Mm-hmm. Ne? But no one wants to fucking decipher that shit. Okay. Right? right? There's a negative and a positive in that. Right? In case it didn't, we're very proud people. And we're, uh, we want to own our land and stuff. But in that, that's positive, right? But in that, there's a negative of the fact that if we don't overrun white people, we don't overrun Chinese people, we don't overrun any other race except ourselves, other black people, yeah, other African, people. other African people from our neighboring countries, yeah. It's not even neighboring countries, nigga. This is Africa, nigga. All of us is one. Yeah. You know what I mean? So uh, we we've been at it and it started here i would believe that it started here right right well, there yeah. was the no, one that kicked it, off you know. in KZN first and yeah it went to cape town and it was a whole situation in yeah cape town, then yeah it started in Joburg, then there was that jeffersstown situation yeah yeah. It, yeah i think it i think it started here though the king w- the king had said some stuff didn't he which king Zulzin. yeah yeah he said some stuff but not this most recent one. I'm talking about the previous one. Yeah, that was that like one? 2014, yeah, yeah, 2013, one, 2014, one, yeah. yeah. And that was what kicked it off, actually. Mm. Because that was that was based more on uh, apparently jobs, but like, mm. we all know, we all know the realities. And please, can we, I'm going to give uh, CK the platform right now to drop some fucking gems, proper gems. My man, you have the floor. Okay, so there's a couple of things going on, and some of them are going to sound like conspiracy theories, but... Everything that sounds unreal is probably real. Look... In the world that we live in right now, it's disgusting. Not only is it disgusting, it's disgusting at how much people, the people who are actually in a position to look after us as a general public don't care and take advantage of that, you know? First of all, everyone needs to remember that the government exists to look after you. Yes. To make sure that they when you open the us. tap, the water they comes out. Work when you turn us. the tap, when you turn the light switch on, you know, electricity goes and the, the light turns on and whatever else you turned on turns on, you know. That's why the government exists. But these people are just out here using all of us as ATMs because what you need to remember is all of that is paid by with our taxes. As and fuck. they're just supposed to take our taxes and do the things, right? Yeah, yeah, but these guys yeah. chow our money. But anyways, put, <laughs> park that in the back <laughs> of your Sorry mind. Water, no gets no enemy. <laughs> you will need this later. So remember it. Sure. Okay. So now the issue at hand is this. We've got, you know, a situation where Africa is trying to unite. Mm. Yeah. This is now a big, big picture, a big picture situation. Africa is trying to unite. Africa went ahead and started this thing called the Africa Free Trade Zone. Yeah. It's a good look. It's a big look because now, you know, in Nigeria, la- we have about three harvests a year. Two of them spoil because there's nowhere for them to go. We don't process our own stuff either. So whatever. And we oh. don't have refrigeration because we don't have constant electricity, which Harvest is silly what? because Harvest we're an oil-producing nation. What? So anyways. Harvest of what, though? Of fruit, vegetables. Serious? Yeah, three two, times a year. Two spoils. And then two of them spoil because there's no processing, there's no storage. Shit. So if we're anyone not wants exporting, to bring so in some stuff from Nigeria... Exactly. Shout out if to you, CK. The new, the new hot shit in the streets now um, that is actually being led by all the singers and all the actors and actresses is to like open up like a, a food processing plant or some shit like that yeah, and, yeah, and yeah. actually tend this stuff and p- send it to the supermarkets. And mm. this is how like P Squared and, and all of them are like funding their record. That's why they haven't like rigged. God damn, that people they haven't re- released a record so in years. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're not releasing songs. Bro. They're balling. You don't even <laughs> yeah. know. They're balling very quietly at home there. But um, the the point is, we have things to trade. In South Africa, there are things that we don't have in Nigeria. There's no marula in Nigeria. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So there's things to trade. And before, we would export raw materials to somewhere else. I wouldn't name names. Yeah, and yeah. import them from other other places sure. and then but that would be our stuff that we exported but now we're paying for it and you're buying it back for like a higher price Egg, uh, 
like times three if you want if you like want to you, you know garbage like basically you guys mm. give them the raw material exactly man, they buy that and then they bring it back as a manufactured item exactly which is or any number of yeah, manufactured but items that goes into like what the government doesn't have and stuff doesn't exactly. it because you can't manufacture your own stuff but the point is why can't you well we, we yeah, can with we education it goes exactly. uh, all boy exactly. back goes back down exactly. to education like yeah. our education when you look at our schooling system like just what i remember from high mm-hmm. school is like biology mm-hmm. a few like things there's nothing practical to mm-hmm. make you your own man it's mm-hmm. more like stuff hey the stuff you should know a few of this, you know a few, a few of this, yeah. then you're going to work for someone. Yeah. There's not the entrepreneurial exactly. spirit, which then feeds into your community, which exactly. then if the f- money is flowing in your community, allows your community to build, so then exchange with other communities, and then as Africans, we, we, it's free trade. Exactly. You know, that's so what it's supposed to be. So like. here's a big picture reason why that's not happening, because yeah. all of the, the loans and the strings attached to all the things that people are, to all the loans that we float off of, keeping in mind that every time there's a budget speech, we say we're getting, we're gonna get some loans to make up the fiscal gap, and we're yeah. gonna get it from this guy and that guy, and all those things come with strings attached. And some of those strings are you may not process your own raw materials. Oh. What? That w- <laughs> I bet you didn't yeah, know that. Yeah, and 99 year <laughs> contracts. Yeah. Us Kong Hong. <laughs> <laughs> it's 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 shocking, but you sign away the ability to do your own thing. But now with these free trade zones, you can cut ties with these guys. So what if America doesn't want to trade with South Africa anymore because we won't take their genetically modified chickens anymore? Yeah. Screw Obama. Sorry, Obama. But screw you because that was a raw deal for us yeah, as yeah, South yeah. Africans, you know. So we wouldn't have to do that anymore because you can go and get chickens from Senegal where they have too many chickens and chickens die. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. and we could live like that, but that doesn't work if you and me aren't beefing as South Africans and Nigerians. And Nigerians yeah, so yeah. for some odd reason, right after that happens, now we have to fight. Do you know what I saw in the news today? You know, s- some rich Tell Nigerian us. guy who owns an airline us. organized to send a couple planes over here to evacuate Nigerians oh, yes, out of South that. Africa. Yes, I, it's saw a real that. Thing. I saw that. It's a real thing. Oh, who is, who is the what? Uh, Chief something something on Yama. He, <laughs> he basically... <laughs> is that not da- Davido's dad? No? No, 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 no. Nigga, Davido's dad is boring, nigga. Davido's, don't, don't Davido's you get dad twisted? was a governor of a state. Um, <laughs> Good lord. That's why. Anyway, <laughs> let's not get into that. <laughs> is that. Wait, is that real? For real? No, yeah, that's the thing. Hey, yo, it all rats on rags. <laughs> 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 yeah, legal. That, that's that's our producer telling us to keep it legal, the keep CEO. it in the lines. Yeah, in the lines. Okay, okay. But so like, all right. Yeah, carry on. So yeah, my point is just that you know, in a very interesting and Cambridge Analytica esque way. Thank you, sir. Suddenly things are being leaked all over WhatsApp, and the inundation like last week was actually crazy because. I was in several WhatsApp groups and things were coming in and I was like, guys, really? 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 Yeah. Really? You had really? to say really, really? a thousand really? times. No, because, and I feel like at least I was there to be like, that doesn't make sense. That doesn't make sense. That doesn't make sense. That doesn't make sense as a Nigerian. Also Otherwise, these things would circulate, you know, and whip people up even more, which I feel like is the point. Okay. It goes into know. like the mob mentality exactly. and everything. Wait, dragon, dragon, hey? dragon, dragon. Before oh we get off note though. I really want us to like dime down on like this whole beef between South Africa and Nigeria. Like, what are your Mike just wants CK? Mike just wants Better Boy to come perform. <laughs> <laughs> no, guys, but like Better Boy is the truth. He actually, does. I'm, I'm trying to let him come through to South Africa. Listen, what is this, my guy? Better Boy wouldn't Burner have Boy gotten that stuff hard. out of context if he wasn't high. Better Boy was high when he read those tweets. Yeah. He read them quickly. He Sit paraphrased by them. Nigeria. 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 I'm taking so it he was Nigeria. emotional already because some stuff he'd he'd read some crazy stuff on WhatsApp. Yeah. <laughs> so he was emotional, and then he's and then he also saw a tweet and he reacted. Hell of a drug. Cocaine's that, a hell of a that, drug. That other yeah. thing that Cocaine's a hell of a drug. About, yes. <laughs> but like, yeah, CK though, like, honestly, I'm, okay, me, I'm a descendant of Tanzania somewhere down the line. But... Tutini, <laughs> Tarazel. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Le Fleur. Oh, Le Fleur. Le Fleur, Le Fleur. But wait, but wait. Fucking But wait. Wow. Um... Besides me, I have obviously never been through any xenophobic attacks because I'm proudly South African. But just yesterday, getting me getting to school yesterday, I was writing a test, and I'm 
there with my one friend, REV. Shout out to you, bro. Like, that's one of the most happiest niggas I know. He ain't Always. REV. Shut up, Dragon. REV is one day. He live? was born dragon, in we murder time. I'm kidding. <laughs> joke about these <laughs> things. <laughs> 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 joke about these things. Liberty. Liberty. Damn it. Relax we yourself. <laughs> so, we both writing a test yesterday. Obviously, he's doing another course for me, but writing in the same um, venue. As he writes, as he writes, I keep seeing this guy like tripping halfway, like he's blowing bubbles from within, he's burping, he's doing mad, mad things. And as soon as the paper finished, he was the first person to run out. I was like, I know what's going on. I get to the toilet, I look at him, I'm like, bro, what's going on? He's puking, he's puking, he's puking. I had to let him calm down a little bit. He was shaking for two hours straight before he had like the guts to tell me, Guti. When I got to town today and I got to the rank, old ladies would not look at me because as soon as I got out of my dad's car before I came to school, already, already, to all the guys at the rank, all the guys that I laugh with up until this day, up until this week, everybody I've been laughing with, Tom Sunwenja, Sunwenja, from town all the way to Lelusia. And for that to happen, he couldn't, e he wasn't even safe. Like by the time he, he started his test, he had already called his mom, good to mom, Please come fetch me. I can't go back to town today. So, yeah. you know, oh, these things real. happen. Like, oh, yeah. Yeah. even though they're not on TV, it's, it's but reality it's and it's that's here and it's yeah, right in front of you. That's the difference between uh, the news and reality, bro. Like, everyone has <coughs> their reality. Can you hear me now? No, okay. Everyone has reality versus what's the name a news broadcast syndrome right like we've all been to good schools we've all seen what good schools do to the community versus what they do to us inside the school <laughs> fair enough do you get what i'm saying oh, true, true, true. You don't even have to explain <laughs> yeah so we all understand that that uh crux of the story. But like, CK, have you as, can I say as a foreign national, can I say that? As an African. As an African. Not from South Africa, but an African as, as my African brother. American. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> what have you gone through? African European. Oh, what have you seen? Yeah. What has touched you over this topic? Guys, what? all types, where you from. All has it types ever of things. African. All types of things. Has it ever like not but made you sleep at night? Well, yeah. Let me put it this way. Um, when I've experienced, okay, obviously I've experienced racism. I, uh, when my family left Nigeria, we first went to Ireland. Yeah. We lived in Ireland in England for a period of about four years. So I experienced like that old-fashioned old European racism where they don't even realize they're doing it. Mm. And they feel like they're doing you a favor by like actually making by eye contact with you. Space. You know what I'm saying? By letting you breathe their air. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotta okay, breathe that well. air. <laughs> so you know, things, things, things like racism don't don't phase me. I feel like it's something that you have to tackle head on on a situation by situation basis, and you move forward. But it's a distraction that you shouldn't let hold you back. Or just tell the motherfucker, I'm better than you. Shut up. When we talk hey. about <laughs> things like <laughs> xenophobia, <laughs> that's different because much like you say, much like your friends experience, the thing that actually would instill terror in you is the fact that that's someone that was your homie yesterday. That's someone that you used to greet the other day. That guy gave you five rand the other day when you didn't have five rand mm -hmm. so you could get home. Yeah. And all of these guys are looking at you like, okay, oh. they're sizing you up. Like, okay, today we, might, we can actually take him out and no one's going to say anything. Meaning, was that what they were thinking all along? And that's the issue. I hate to say... That's the issue. I hate to quote Donald Trump and say fake news. Wow. It's true. So then how do you feel with about everything that's going on? And like Guys, can I, can I say something? Ne? It might sound fucking weird. Because I'm the dragon. This is my job. My <laughs> <laughs> job to sound I, weird. I bring, I bring the, the fucking... Fire, I bring the weirdness. The heat. Nah. Dude, South Africa is a, a tumultuous plane. We all know this. South Africa's never been a place where there's peace. 
ever. We've been fighting. We fought white people for this land. Black people fought black people for this land, apparently, according to our history books, that we didn't write. But... Mm. Anyways. Uh, <laughs> so we fought people for this land, and then we fought white people for this land, and now we're fighting each other for this land. This is this is a, a story that's very repetitive. It keeps going on and on, and uh, we we don't see who's winning, but someone's winning. There's a famous qu- African quote, uh, a proverb, if you if you may. It says, "When brothers fight each other, a stranger." takes their inheritance yes inheritance. i saw one. that one that's oh one. it's so true it's so we true. don't know who the fuck is gonna take our shit but we know that eventually we'll mm-hmm. wipe each other out someone's gonna take our shit yeah <laughs> stop <laughs> stop it says but says the adopted brother okay if we had to discuss like a solution for for both the things, both the xenophobic attacks and the gender based violence, what would they be? Like examples or like I don't know, just top of your head. Pew 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 Look at Lamonti with the water. Yo. <laughs> first first of all. Uh, sorry for my voice. I've been like recording and stuff, so I kind of sound okay. like whoops. Okay. <laughs> kind of sound like drunk, aka right now. Okay. <laughs> um, I was gonna give a simple example. I saw this video. Um, it was in like Japan. Now Japan and like Asian countries have this heavy, overt sort of sexualization of the female body. You know what I mean? And it's like for them, it's normalized. The same way you're talking about how racism is normalized in in like Ireland and mm. European countries. So. Yeah, so girl standing in a train, and she's got a short dress on, but not inappropriate, regardless of what that even means, you know, depending on who's asking. And then there's this guy. He's got a phone trying to film underneath her her, her short dress. Yeah. And there's a dude sitting next to, old guy, older guy sitting next to this guy with the phone. Sorry, was this was this on a train? In a train. In the okay, subway. So, so groping in Japan. No, no, no. Not, I'm not talking about groping. I'm just talking about a woman was just standing in a train and a dude that was sitting in the same train had his phone out trying to act as if he's on his phone, but he's really wanting to film underneath her dress. Okay. What the you fuck? Know, that's like, he's literally just that's, that's slowly like leaning culture, forward. Actually. Yeah, so that's what I mean. So it's yeah. so normalized, you know, it's like an everyday thing. So there's this older man sitting next to this dude, the pervert. Um, all he does is simply gets up stands in front of the dude, doesn't make a commotion, and gives the lady his seat. And then she sits down. You know what I mean? Now, that's not necessarily heroic or anything, but it stops the problem. But it's enough. As it is, you know what I mean? Mm, And maybe out of all the times that that guy has done that, it may have started a conversation, it may have not. But in that instance, she was protected. You know what I mean? So that's that's what I think. Actually, thank, thank you for that, bro, because we've always wondered, you know, like, how? Because you know, like uh, being inept apparently is like a, a thing that was going around saying, "Oh God, all of us are quiet," you know. Mm. And I was like, "Okay, so how am I vocal? Wh- what does it take for me to be a vocal person in your struggle, in your strife? How do I help you out? You know what I mean?" Yeah. And there was a post that says, "Okay." Dude, I know you trying to understand what's going on, yeah. And that's the thing with guys is that we're very we're not what is it, linear? We're straight straight as linear. Linear, yeah, linear. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're very linear creatures. So th- that's why guys had such a big problem with the Minnow Trash hashtag is that we read that first and we didn't read the posts because was like, oh, nigga, this is a tag. So fuck this. I'm not reading it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I'm telling you a, a general basis of what guys were thinking. Now, is that you read the hashtag and you're like, oh, fuck. I don't want to be a part of this shit. This is bullshit. Wait, from Speaking about that hashtag, there's actually 
um, a tweet message? that I saw. Is yes. It from no. Uh, here? There's Fuck, a thing God that I it. saw. There's a thing that I saw that said. Um, it's not the fact that men are trash. It's that every woman has had an experience with a trash man. Every woman knows. Uh, every every woman knows another raped woman or something like that. And but no man knows a rapist. It's like nigga logic. Which motherfucker is gonna tell you man, that he I just rape raped a dick? Nigga, the, that's some jail time. But I feel like. But Dude. I feel like. Not necessarily that you go Am to I your kid? friends and you're saying and you're saying, "Oh my gosh, I raped this chick." I mean, but but right. there is a way that Let you go. Tell speak. You're not like, for example, let's take the guy that that did the things to Uinen. The mm. way that he probably went about it wasn't like to say, "Hey, I went and I raped the chick today." It was probably just, "Hey, I went there and I smashed." And because guys get excited over like yeah. one of them getting smashed or whatever, no one's gonna ask, "Did you get consent?" No one's gonna ask that's that. Not, that's not a natural not part of the yes, conversation. Yeah. I, I, get and it. It's, I get it. I get it. I get it. No, I'm not saying. I'm not saying that it is. Yo, we yeah. aren't arguing yeah. yet, but we're just saying like, if you get a chick, you're just gonna be like, "Yo, my niggas, I just smashed this girl. Mm. You know, I be. You know, I got her." And yeah, then, man. but you never ask. No, we don't. No, we do. just anyone. In we general. don't. No one asks anyone if yeah, no you know. I wanted to fuck this guy. Just, he wanted just, to, to just fuck me. Point, what, I, what, what I think is being said, at least from my interpretation, is the fact that what informs the dude coming back to tell his boys that it's not even the fact about him smashing. It's the pride and all of that egotistic Thank fuel you. that he wants to give you to assert his manhood in that conversation. So it's not not so much that we won't talk about who's a rapist, but if I come back to my boys and I'm like, yo, I just hit that, it asserts a level of superiority in that space with niggas. You it know does. what I mean? And that's what the dude is chasing. And as we were talking offline about how like rape culture, before it even gets to rape or things, there's things like coercion, there's the rape jokes, there's, you know, small yeah. level yeah. things. Yeah. And that's, that it being normalized at that lower level is the problem. You know what I mean? So, yes, you don't know rapists, but if you're talking amongst rapists, most likely you're all problematic in the room. With regarding to the GBV, um, yeah, I am right. Gender-based violence. Yes. yes. Yo, um, so, <laughs> I was like, what is... <laughs> so, there's another meme that says, death penalty seems like a good idea until your innocent brother gets framed. What then? Whoops. Which no. takes me back to the... DBN underscore survivors. Yes. Can I say something about that? Okay, ladies, listen. I know you've probably been through shit with guys, but if you're going to call out niggas with a Twitter page, there's a lot of girls that have been calling out niggas for no reason just to get back at them. There was even a girl that got fined recently, 500K. Yeah. For That's real. What is it? Um... Defamation, defamation of, of character. character. Yeah. Woo. So, ladies, this is a serious time. And if you've gone through something, I've been through something, but I didn't call out the guy on thing on Twitter. But let's just, um, speaking about Twitter, on that page, a lot of guys that we know, all of us sitting here, we know most of these guys. No names mentioned. Yeah, we aren't going to mention names. We've chilled with the guys. So, yeah, it comes, at the, it comes as a shocker to us, and we're just like, what the fuck? But at the same yeah. time, I can, I can 1,000% guarantee that not everyone that is there is... It's probably done uh, that yeah, shit. Because, and, and the second you start naming people, like just because you have a, like a personal a vendetta, vendetta, it defeats the purpose of that page. And you're defeating the, the movement, you're defeating just the message behind. Like we're trying to actually um, make other women aware that the problem is, it's dumb, it's dumb. Yeah, because it's dumb. apparently and idiots not gonna listen. That's the only problem. Dude, like there are apparently cases of it, like the person who who's running the page. I don't know how they figured it out, but there's people creating fake accounts and adding that other person. Like if someone posted, I don't know, like a specific person, then that person will create a fake account and add that same person yeah, over and over so that it looks like it's a real, it's a real thing. 
Everything men of Kyle are good at rugby. Are not paid. Paid. And that's not better. cool. You're defeating the purpose, and you and you are taking away a chance of someone who wants justice for their situation. Um, Dumi and CK, is there anything, any last thing that you'd like to say, drop before we close off episode five? Hashtags will not save South Africa. Only South Africans can save South Africa. Hey. Mm. So hey. 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 Do me what you got for us, girl. Yeah, I'm just saying support is all you need. And be there for your brothers and sisters. Yeah. Everyone's life matters. Whether you don't know the person or you know the person, but be there for him. Uh, be there for him or her and support them and that's how we can make a better south africa we um, get you we get you we get the you. captain the captain says i don't know guys work harder be a better person i know it's a lot but hey it, it, it really makes for a better world when everybody's just genuine and i need you all to just be genuine and know how to accept your else as a person because that makes you better. You need to turn your else into lessons and become a better person at the Straight end. Straight up. Love that. Drag on. <laughs> Keep it short, dragon. Keep it short. <laughs> 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 the, the betrayal that I've received is not. We love Jeez. you. Hey, all I'll say is that I, I don't think everyone's ready for all the conversations but i'm glad that we started at least one conversation mm. so with that i leave you with love and cheers yeah and i won't lie this conversation helps a lot I'm especially glad. to talk about my story which has been hard Another one bites the dust, my swan society. Hey, hey. Hey. Oh, thank you, CK and Dumi for Especially Zandra. Especially <laughs> Zandra. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you, thank oh, you. Oh, wait. Guys, do you want to drop your numbers, your IG details, maybe? How do we get all these? Instagram, doomzy.lamini. <laughs> Facebook, Dumi Lamini. Twitter, at doomzy8. And that's what's going on. Hey, to Melee. Yeah. 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 It stands for Ateli Zinja. Ateli That low key makes no sense. CK. <laughs> you can find me on IG at KOSIK. It's just K O S I K double E. Don't forget the second E. Don't forget it. Please don't. Yes. Don't and guys, nigga, so happy to slide in their DM. Wow. Shoot With your shots. Ah. Shoot your shots. <laughs> it must hey, make sense hey, before hey, you slide hey, in our hey, DMs. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> and please don't forget to visit our social media platforms at Deeply Rooted Derby. Hey, hey. <laughs> On YouTube and everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. Um, you can find me on Instagram at IG underscore Shinny Bengu and the dragon at the Spanxalot and ordinary So Spanxalot at the dragon. The God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> but you guys um, really need to know. Good. Dragon, what you got to say? It's the dragon. Party time, party time. It's party time. Hi. And hey, it's the hey. captain. Bye. And my brother's on troops. <laughs> okay, sure. RadioTR.co.za